South Africa is a fabulous and a very wonderful country. If she achieves the caliber of leader it deserves, observed Archbishop Desmond Tutu at a press briefing. Mr. Tutu spoke briefly at a commemoration of 20 years of power struggle that turned the table upside down, that moved the wheel of power from the white minority rule to democratic rule of black South Africa. An achievement he observes as spiritual changes in his life and the most moment on the 27th of April when he entered the polling booth alone to vote. The moment without intimidation, arbitrary arrest and the prying eyes of the appetite regime he happily echoed. He said that was suddenly after the time when police officers used to climb up trees and peep through windows to watch if someone was doing what could be attributed to sabotage during the apartheid rule. Now the younger generation has witnessed a different thing, he stated. generation uh, had imagined that at, at this time we would be sharing Though he had never supported any political party in South Africa, simply the real South Africa was much close and similar to the one before. There was wider achievement when Madiba stepped into the shoes of democracy, but up to now South Africans go to bed hungry and have classes on the trees. Wonderful achievement in the sense that proper running water now reaches almost all domestic households. Much to be celebrated, but everybody has accepted that the country harbored the widest gap between the rich and the poor more than anywhere in the world, Mr. Tutu said. said I mean, that I, I'm, uh, I, I, would, I won't vote for them. That is something that I have said. Uh, and I say it with a very sore, very heavy heart. Uh, because I, I have felt that on, on the whole, they have, they have tended to, to be close to the kinds of things that we dreamt about. We dreamt about a society that would be compassionate, yeah. a society that really made people feel they mattered. And you can't do that in a society where you have people who go to bed hungry. When you have many, many of our children uh, uh, still attending classes under trees. Now, I am, I, am I, I, I must tell you, I, I am going to recognize and, and, and not concede. Uh, recognized very firmly. The Archbishop told the gathering that was much to be celebrated and jubilated, but it is the right time that the elite works three months as to narrow the gap between the rich and the poor. He cited the visionary success of a former Italian prime minister during an economic showdown who advised his cabinet to use more modest cars. Look at the flashing and expensive cars the South African government elite drives. He exclaimed, the religious cleric believed that the world celebrated with them about the Truth and the Reconciliation Commission. Though it was not the first, he went on, but the first to grant amnesty and insisted that all sittings should be in public. Accepted that uh, recommendation by the TRC, we wouldn't be where we are. Where we now, where we are is is that South Africa has the widest gap between rich and poor anywhere in the world. Uh, yeah, and we can't do everything. Yeah, nobody ever expected that we were going to have a paradise overnight. Um, but we could have shown that we intend walking the path that is going to ensure that we, we try to narrow the gap as much as is possible. He revealed that he had a good relationship with President Mandela during the time of the TRC. Unfortunately, Mandela stayed for only one term and that relationship faded after he was succeeded by Tabombeki. The bishop advised the public to think carefully and pray deeply to ask God to give them the right decisions come 7th of May elections. Remember that you have a precious thing and know where to put your eggs. And as a religious leader, I caution you to pray deeply to God. Ask him to direct your decisions. He further advice. For Africa TV, I like to see